Hello and welcome to the game breakdown. I'm Alex Ford and I'm playing the Torchlight 2 beta. Uh, this beta has many new improvements to the original, namely the addition of a multiplayer and the improvement of the world and the new and improved character creation system. So if I would start a new game I can choose from four different classes. We have the Berserker, um, the Fast and Furious melee damage dealer he'll be the one at the front all the time uh, we have the ember mage, the cast class, you, you'll probably recognize him as a kind of your classic mage uh, we have the engineer, he's he's a bit of a tank uh, with lots of AOE damage and can summon robots to defend and support and we have the outlander who's probably similar to a rogue class so for each of the characters you are able to have a female and or a male character you have to change their face and you know things like that their hair hair color or just randomized just randomized and pick a name Alex yeah original I know um, anyway uh, returning our is the pet system now in the original game you only had two you had sort of a links cat type character and a wolf uh, instead the, the the cats instead renamed to the panther and the wolf still here don't worry he's there so uh, we're joined by the bulldog the cat chakawari papillon the ferret and the hawk uh, each of these can be uh, configured with their different appearances so if I were to load up my main character you'll see I'll be able to choose from three options the basic internet, uh, single player which is an offline single player um, no internet needed there uh, or the LAN mode um, so you can play the game as you wish at the moment for the beta the internet is the only one available um, so here for the internet what you can see I'm in a lobby at the moment uh, you can make your own server or join one, each of these configure with their own different settings, number of players, passwords, game ranks, difficulty, that kind of thing um, I will show you what I mean when this game is probably quite easy so I'll put it on veteran at the moment let's not join one because I want to show you a couple of particular things and you know those playing the multiplayer may not realize that so yeah. uh, anyway so here we are in a place called the Asterian Enclave this is the hub town for this particular area um, there are three different areas kind of world areas uh, each with their, their own specific hub town but as it is a beta I can only show you this particular hub world and this particular area now here in the hub towns you'll be able to use various different vendors like general goods over here there's blacksmith um, there's stashes, shared stash which is kind of shared between your characters, you've got enchanters enchant your items make them better that kind of thing uh, general movers, gem smashers um, who remove the gem from a particular gem socket let's see if I can show you this so here you'll see that I've got two gems in here this guy will be able to remove um, one of these gems or two of them, whatever. And this guy over here, called the Gem Saver, will destroy the object, but in return will get me the objects back uh, in each hub town. I'm presuming there's going to be a waypoint portal, where like, you just like quickly teleport over the world. There's a couple in the overworld as well, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, anyway, those familiar with the fishing hole from the first game. Um, the system is pretty much the same. Those who aren't, you'll be able to uh, fish different items like like fish. Let's see what we've got here. A frenzy fish. Uh, let's see what it turns our pet into because you can feed your pet fish which gives it a specific set of abilities. Uh, what's this one? So this one, faster move for three minutes and faster attack speed. Okay. So I'll just drop that here. Um, I think we'll save that for combat a bit. 
Um, but yeah, I've I've seen one, them where they let you transform your pet into a spider or a war bee, something like that. It it really does spice up the the gameplay when you have a variety of different, you know, transformable pets at your disposable at your disposal. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the overworld. Uh, which one should I go to? This one, Frosted Hills. Um, okay, so when we enter, you'll probably see that. Well, this is a kind of pass between the uh, Frosted Hills and the Zero Enclave, but you'll be able to see that I've explored all of this because I've played. Let's see how much stuff I've played. I've played a good seven hours on this, so I've I've pretty much explored everything. Um, but in reality, it's going to be completely randomised as soon as you start up all the, uh, all the game, and it will stay constant throughout. So once I've uh, explored all of this, I'll just be able to go back through again without a hitch. Okay, so as I enter into the Frosted Hills, I've explored all of this again. This is also completely uh, randomised. Uh, if you remember the first game, there was you can only go through the town of Torchlight. So basically that's the equivalent of a hub town and the dungeons now the dungeons were very very linear there was there were barely any paths if I just switch the map you'll be able to see there are many many different paths to reach one location which is very good it's, it's much more open worldy as the name open world suggests um, but in comparison the dungeons which I will show you I think are a lot more linear but in that kind of makes sense when you play when you actually play the game because when you when you're doing a quest you, you don't want to be trawling through just hours and hours of dungeon just exploring everything because trust me you you will want to explore everything um yes in the over, I'll show you a bit of combat but uh in the overworld there are a variety of different side quests you can do the the main quest is supposedly going to last up to about uh, level, th uh, sorry, not level, uh, about 30 hours, uh, I think. Um, in reality, the that the first act of Torchlight 2, so that that would be this area at the moment is is about twice the size of Torchlight 1, which is pretty impressive. They've they've done a lot to upgrade this. See, maybe it's why why it's taken four years to get this out. But I'd much rather they spent time working on the game and improving it than you know releasing it early. Um. Okay, let's just take out this guy, and I think I will show you the pet. Now I'm well and truly away from the hub town. Um. As you can see with the pet inventory, there are a couple of new things. Firstly, there are now tags and collars, which is different instead of just being able to share your jewellery with your pet. Instead of uh, being able to equip a, a, a necklace where the collar is, is now, um, or a ring where the tag is, it's now completely specific to the pet, which uh, makes them a lot more valuable and a lot more rarer, so it's, it's definitely worth it. Um, and also, uh, yeah, I better show you this. Uh, as with the first game, you you are still able to send your pet back to town while you're in a dungeon with all your unwanted loot. So far, as to just load it up with some of the stuff that I don't really want or need. Yeah, um, I can send them back to town, and you'd bring me some cash back. But I can also buy a couple of consumables. Send him away, and you'll be able to buy me max of four different types. A specific number that I want. It's very useful when you're trawling through dungeons like these. You, you often find yourself you really don't want to go back to town. If, if you do have to, there are the um, town portals, but they're not the most useful things in the world, and you, you, you find you don't really use them that often. In fact, you, you find you don't really use teleportation that often at all. It's th th there's often not much of a reason to go back unless you're just XP grinding, which, in my opinion, isn't really the way to go. Because if you do explore everything on the way there, 
then you just didn't really need to have to upgrade a couple of levels. Uh, what's next? Okay, um, ah yes, of course. Uh, skills. Now, if you play the first game you'll remember all these skills. They're, they're pretty much exactly the same but they're a lot more interesting more, and more exciting and make this game much more action orientated. Um, all the stats before and there's a new revamped stat page for those Dungeons and Dragons players of you out there. Um, so once you finish the game, which you inevitably will, hopefully, um, you can decide to do a new game plus, which is instead of the retirement mode that was in the... oh god. Oh. So instead of using the retired mode, you can do a new game plus, so you've got to play through the whole game as you wish. Um, doing more XP grinding, looking for loot, that kind of thing, playing with your friends with the same character. Um, all the loot, all the skills that you've unlocked. Uh, so yeah, it would definitely allow, it will be interesting when you do try to defeat the game on Elite, if they fix the difficulty. I don't know if you noticed, but there seems to be a couple of issues, like with um, large amounts of uh, monsters mobbing you like that. That's kind of irritating. And um, also some difficulty, like individually they're very easy to beat. So, yeah, they've got a bit of work to do on the difficulty front, but that shouldn't be much of an issue for the, for the release. Um, oh, these guys again. Of course, like any RPG, I should be using potions, but I'm talking to you and slightly distracted, so sorry if I'm playing badly. Um, for the combat, in case you haven't noticed, the pets seem... no, not pets, the animals seem to like to explode with blood or, or goop or whatever they're made of. It's... and especially with all the new skills, that they're definitely making this game more of an interesting action orientated RPG, a proper action RPG as opposed to just an RPG with, with the side of action. Uh, it's much more interesting, engaging gameplay, which is probably what you want from a game which can get, I'm going to admit it now, slightly boring when you're just clicking your way through swathes, as swathes of enemies. Um, so yeah, uh, mod support still remains. Uh, those who aren't familiar, uh, mod support is something encouraged by Runic Games. Um, so you'll be able to use the Torch Ed, which is the Torchlight 2 editor, letting you make your own content. And if you've played the Torchlight uh, 1, you'll definitely be expecting great things from the community because the, the, this just means uh, a lot of new content, like new classes, a lot more quests, new areas, that kind of thing. It's going to be very interesting to see what comes out of all of that. Um, what else? Ah, yes. Um, there are a couple of things. For the multiplayer, you will get your own drops. I've played a bit of multiplayer, not a lot. I'm going to be honest because I play at very odd times. I don't want to have to devote a lot of time to this. Just even though I've spent three hours, seven hours. Um, there is no PvP planned. Uh, it's more of a co-op game but they are rumoured to be making an MMO so I'm expecting a lot of the things that you m were maybe expecting in this game are most likely going to be in the Torchlight MMO so things like mounts and things like that oh god um, you'll get your individual drops so people you're playing with won't be able to see what you've got they'll be individual to what you have um, that's, that's also very interesting, but you'll be able to trade with players as well. So, if you want to trade one for one, it can be very good. Now, I guess this is probably a good idea to show you what you can do for the... So when you die, you can either return back to town, or return for losing nothing, or return to the entrance of the area, and return for losing a small percentage of your gold. And it's kind of worth it. So, I'm going to go back to Tub World, because, yeah. I, I can show you a bit of uh, all gameplay at the end. Um... Unfortunately, the game will not appear on Xbox uh, as the first did due to just hardware limitations. This game is just too damn big to fit on. It's 
yeah, and unless the next gen consoles do come out, that's a possibility. But at the moment, for the current release, it is very, very unlikely uh, because then they'll just have to rework the whole of the framework of the game. So it's 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 not looking hopeful for you XBLA users. But anyway, it's time to end be speaking. No, I'm not going to kill myself yet, but I have to go. So I'll probably say an indefinite goodbye. The break's not over yet, so I'll see you guys later when I can do more videos. It'll just a heads up. It'll probably be in about a month or so. So yeah. So I'll see you guys later, and I'll leave you with a bit more gameplay. See ya. have enough money.
Your pet has departed.
I don't have enough mana. Not enough mana. I don't have enough mana. Not enough mana. Not enough mana. Your pet has fled. Your pet is fleeing. Your pet has fled. I'm badly wounded. Not enough mana. Not enough mana. Quest complete. I don't have enough mana. 